What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with Oliver J.R. Cooper. Oliver, how are you, Bowen? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. It's awesome to have you here. So you guys, let me give you guys a little bit about his bio. And first, uh, how we met, which was very recently. I read some stuff you yeah. wrote on Twitter. It blew my mind. You know, as you guys know, the new Jay Campbell is the Jay Campbell of consciousness and vibration and spirituality. And I was like, this is a guy I want to bring on my show. He's written 21 books. He's pretty amazing, truthfully. Uh, transformational writer, teacher, and consultant. He hails from the UK. His insightful commentary and analysis covers all aspects of human transformation, including love. We like that. Partnership, self-love, huge, and inner awareness which as I always say is the most important thing with over 2,400 in-depth articles. Do you guys hear that again? 2,400 articles highlighting human psychology and behavior. Oliver ho offers hope along with his sound advice. I mean, again, this is an amazing dude and thankfully the universe through the demonic social media infrastructure of Twitter brought us together, which is, again, just how the universe works. So, man, Oliver, it's an honor and a, hump and a blessing to have you here. How did Oliver J.R. Cooper get on the Jay Campbell podcast? Well, I think that you replied to another uh, tweet on there. And then after that, I shared something, a short comment, and then shared a video. And then to my surprise, you ended up messaging me and giving me the very generous offer of appearing on this podcast. And instantly I thought, yes, I want to be a part of that. And within a very short period of time, I sent you an email and we set that up. And it just happened, as you said, very quickly. And it's a great honor to be on your show today, Jay. It's an, it's an honor to have you, man. I mean, 2,400 articles, 21 books. I mean, that's amazing, man. I mean, you're definitely connected to what I call the, you know, divine still light, the creative energy of source, um, because you can't be not connected to be able to write that prolifically. Um, we have a lot of points here to talk about today, um, but before um, we even hit some of them, I, I just want to kind of get your opinion, because I've been doing this with a lot of my guests recently. Yeah. What, what is your opinion of what is going on right now? Like, with, you know, obviously we're all dealing with this whole shutdown and COVID and all the nonsense mm -hmm. that's going on with it. But what is your just very surreal, very visceral interpretation of what is really happening to the human collective right now? Well, I think one way of looking at it would be to say that there's the collective unconscious and obviously all of our own consciousness is feeding into that. And then I would say that every now and then, in the same way that we can have dramas in our own life and more of those, the less conscious we are of our own inner baggage and wounds. And in the same way, these small dramas play into even bigger dramas. And so like with the COVID, for example, it can, people can feel isolated or depressed or powerless and angry. And part of that is they can end up coming into contact. A lot of people have coming into contact with their own wounds that they've been out of touch with some of them perhaps their whole life right so the same as though these wounds are then being triggered it appears as though there's something out there because there's always something out there with the mind there's always something out there and as you said in the beginning the inner awareness without that we are unable to see how out there there's a mirror of what's taking place within us so it just seems as though every now and then the collective unconscious erupts in a way, and what is going on within us creates something big out there. And the key is, of course, for us to look at what is taking place within us so we can start to work through that. And so there can be less dramas externally and less 
of these manifestations of like an external power, an external oppressor or something like that, who appears to have all this control because we have renounced our own inner control and because we're not in touch with our own inner power. So then there's always something external to reflect that. Beautiful, man. Now I know why, how you've written 21 books. It's pretty profound what you just said. Um, I mean, I, I could unpack, I could, I could attack that, what you just said, not attack it, but just address it because you said a yeah. lot in very little words, um, which is a true master can do. Um, I'll just say this. Most people are unconscious of their unconsciousness. Yeah. And as you know, you know, we're now in a day and time and an age where technology is warping everything. It's manipulating yeah. things. It's obviously very holographic. As you said, you know, you talked about the external. It literally forces people to focus on the external. Yeah. And it takes people like you and me, and there are many like us, you know, going outside of this external holographic construct of social media and screens and yeah. you know, mainstream and all that to, you know, examine what is truly within, which is obviously the spirit. And how do we do that is, you know, and I talk about this all the time and I'm sure, you know, in, and I haven't read all of your books. You did send me one of your books. I did go through it. I unfortunately have not read the entire thing, but it is on uh -huh. my nightstand. I mean, I am yeah. reading it. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing. And, and, and again, that's why I wanted to make sure I could prepare. But I mean, the, the reality is, is that we're in a day and time and an age right now where most people do not even understand the thing that you just mentioned, the things that I talk about, the things that you yeah. write about. Because again, the external is what is the focus. And mm -hmm. until people can focus on what is the most important thing, which is the internal, yeah. Um, it's going to be really difficult for them to truly awaken. And, you know, that kind of goes to our first point, mm -hmm. which is self-awareness, which is obviously the yeah. most important thing. And, you know, without getting into a deep analysis of metaphysics or quantum physics or even consciousness, yeah. you know, most people truly never attain self-awareness because again, they just they go, you know, they just, their experience of life is just body, as I call it, body sensing. Yeah. It's just yeah. physical, you know, whatever they do, whether it's, you know, eat or have sex mm -hmm. or work out or whatever it is, it's just this physiological experience of, you know, what I call body sensing. They don't do any reflective, meditative, mindfulness, contemplation, mm -hmm. whatever to get, again, what you were talking about, to go, in, to go internal, to become truly self-aware. Talk yeah. about that. Yeah, I think, as you said, it is very much the, the main point, the foundation. And in an ideal world, perhaps this would be taught at school. And children would learn this very early on. And then at school and then perhaps at university. So they have that foundation. And then through having that foundation, and I'd also add to that critical thinking as well. Right. right. They can then work through their wounds. So even if their childhood is a bit rough. They can then go through the education system and develop the self-awareness and ideally as well, get the training so they know how to heal their inner wounds. And then by the time they're an adult, they can then create a life that's in alignment with who they are and start to, as, as idealistic as this may sound, to create peace and harmony, to be an example of that themselves. However, because of, that is missing, they end up, it's very common then for people to get involved in politics and things like that, which can just end up feeding more of what is already going on. And then someone else plops up. I don't want to go too much into the politics, but just right. someone else pops up and it seems though they're different or someone might seem as though they're going to solve what's going on. But then someone gets caught up in that and this whole thing, be careful, I think it was Nietzsche, he said, be careful if you stare into the abyss or whatever, because you might become the same. So it's very easy to then to get waylaid, if right. you will. Sure. And instead of working through their own baggage, and as I said, being an example, they can just sustain the old system that needs to collapse, really. Exactly. I mean, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, it's 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 very it's very easy today to be caught up, as you said, waylaid into the yeah. system. You know, the matrix is what I call it, right? Just the yeah. whole the whole suppression of human consciousness through externalization. Yeah, you know that's that's kind of where we're at, um, and it really does take a person working to truly, you know, on themselves to tr- and, and 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 again, as I call it, exiting the system or exiting yeah. the matrix on a day in day out basis, right? Like you, you, yeah. you must have your own, you know, daily ritual, mm. some form of mindfulness training that you yeah. regimentedly, regularly, consistently, I love using the term ruthless focus practice. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because if you don't, as you said, the system will suck you in so yeah. fast. And, you know, I use this, I say this all the time. Um, and obviously I've stepped on the shoulders of great um, human beings that have taught self-improvement and self-exploration. Mm-hmm. But when you're in this world, you are consciously co-creating mm-hmm. and you're connected yeah. to that divine energy, energy of source, God, whatever you want to call it, the divine frequency. But when you're of this world, you're consuming and again, yeah. the system, the collective consciousness wants you to consume Netflix, the internet, yeah. porn, TV, yeah. the mainstream news culture. It never yeah. stops. But when you are creating, and again, I say consciously co-creating, yeah. you're not in that. You're not absorbing that. You're not consuming anything that they can train you and program you. You are literally creating other things, <clears throat> hopefully, that other human beings you know, have benefit by reading or observing, you know, whether you're a painter, a sculptor, a writer, an author. So it's like, when you understand that how you really separate yourself as a being in today's day and age with so much um, disinformation and saturation of externalization, um, you really can quickly learn that you don't have to be caught up in that stuff, Oliver. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, there's not enough of us you know, really truthfully talking about this. And there's obviously less of people seeking those pursuits. You know, again, most people today want, and again, technology makes it so easy. They want to choose the, 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 you know, the least difficult task or the least Mm. difficult, um, you know, plan of maneuvering, you know, again, Mm. how do I exist on a day in day out basis and make it as easy as I can, yeah. right? And yeah. that's and, and again, as you know, most people choose the easy way out or the easiest yeah. path or the path of least resistance. Yeah, and and I think this comes back to what I said earlier on is if if someone is in pain, let's say from the word go, so they had a lot of pain when they were younger, and then there's more pain. And obviously we all have this need to experience pleasure over pain that's obviously hardwired into us, but with awareness we can see, okay, this might be pleasurable, but where's it going to lead? Right. And of course, the more pain someone is in, the more they're likely to be trapped in these nets that are all around us, whether it's porn, whether it's food, whether it's entertainment, there's always something out there that is going to appear so enticing because it gives someone who's in pain a way out. Right. Yeah. It's very, very profoundly stated. So the second point that we're going to talk about is trauma. And I have come to find now that this to me is actually the most important thing in our universe at this current state date and time to integrate. Right. Because as you said, you know, eloquently and eloquently at the beginning of this podcast, we all have trauma. We come into the world in physical experience, you know, most of us come through the birth canal. We get beat up in the birth canal. We come out screaming yeah. and we hit oxygen. Our ba- you know, as babies, we're screaming, oh my God, you know, we've been yeah. in the mother's womb for nine months. So it's like trauma is part and parcel of the physical experience. Mm. But most yeah. of us, unfortunately, because the system, again, the externalization, the lack of true healers, the, the lack of people who can teach this, never ever do a internal self-examination and you know as you know admit you know what their issues are i mean they most people can't even like personally like 
deal with, you know, bad things that have happened to them to anyone. They won't tell their husband, their wife, their priest, you know, their healer, you know, their shaman. They can't do that. And it's like, until you can get to a point where you can be honest with yourself, and again, I like to say your higher self, you, you're, you're yeah. never, you're never going to like integrate that trauma. And, 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 you know, you know, in my personal experiences in my life, you know, I've had two or three different nights where I call it the dark nights of the soul, yeah. um, where I learned that, Hey, this is just part of the journey. Mm-hmm. And many people, because it goes back to that first point, and I want to get your opinion on this, but many people who are afraid to take chances and never deviate off the easiest, you know, the path of least resistance, they never really, um, Oliver, they never really experience the point of great suffering that is the transformational moment. Yeah. They never get there, right? So it's like, how are they going to integrate trauma when they don't even accept the idea that they have trauma? Hmm. yeah well i suppose again it's because there is so many options in society to be distracted and obviously what happens with trauma is that we can forget that we're forgotten so someone can end up living basically in their head and be dead from the neck down or the hips down and with the defenses of the ego projection or justification or displacement or splitting, whatever it may be, the issues are then always external. So it's this person, it's the president, it's whoever it may be. It's the wife, it's the girlfriend, there's always someone out there. And this then prevents the individual from going within and saying, well, these are actually my mirrors. But again, living in a society that has always got a reason why So your life is like this because of this person, because of the government, because of a virus, because there's always something out there that then prevents someone from looking within. And they then have no concept that there is an inner world and their outer world, so-called outer world, is mirroring their inner world. But just to be clear, I think defense mechanisms are simply neutral. In a way, they are there to show us because we can't, when it comes to self-awareness, we can't look within directly we have to do it indirectly right and so we do that by becoming aware of our defenses and then through becoming aware of those obviously we need to have an understanding of them then we can go within so okay i keep meeting people that are always angry okay perhaps i'm the one who's got anger problems and then we go in that way beautiful yeah i love how you're talking about your your internal mirror you know because i always say the same thing you know everything that we push out, and this gets into the whole quantum physics understanding of how you know reality creation is always happening. Yeah. But you know, everything that we see without is a projection of within. <laughs> and like you said, you know, like it's really when you say something negative or antagonistic or you know, mean spirited to someone else, that's how you truly feel internally that you're gonna manifest that externally. Yeah. And people are so, you know, especially in today's society right now, if we were to talk about like, you know, the current events of like yeah. the, the Black Lives Matter and the protesting and the, the horrible violence and the burning down buildings and the removing of and defacing of monuments and all of this insanity. Yeah. It all goes back to what I call the victimhood vibration, mm. which is, yeah. you know, on the Hawkins scale, you know, you're down here below the line of integrity. I mean, look at this grief, apathy, guilt, and shame are the four lowest points. Again, on this quantitative scale, whether this these numbers mean anything or not, it's still root chakra, yeah. but I mean, yeah. again, grief, apathy, guilt, and shame. And that's what they're forcing on massive amounts of people yeah. in the population who, as you know, Oliver, are, already not doing any self-introspective work, not understanding that it's okay to have guilt and shame, not, you know, integrating it or, or even attempting to integrate it because again, a lack of recognition, lack of self-awareness. So it's like yeah. this giant, again, I call it the victimhood vibration is like kind of now encircled or ensnared the globe. Yeah, It's because these people refuse to accept that, this is wrong. This yeah. is not healthy. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, a while ago, I, I wrote an article about this, about personal power. Sure. 
And in there, I said, when it comes to per I mean, personal power, big part of that is the third chakra, of course. The, the yellow chakra there, which is the ego, the inner child, it's all there. Sense of self. And when that part of us is not in a good way, and obviously the root and the second one as well, if the third is not good in a good way, those two are not going to be either. But when that is not in a good way, and someone is in that place, and to them, because of the level of consciousness they are in, right. they're either a victim or they're a perpetrator. So their whole <laughs> worldview then is either everyone else is either a victim or they're a perpetrator. Right. And then that is, it's the area of power games, ego battles, and as you're saying, that's what we are seeing now, the manifestation of that right. in society. And the ego, the victim mentality is obviously highly addictive. Uh, and, yeah. be, and another thing as well, coming down to that, you said about the shame. Shame has got to be one of, if not the most painful feeling to experience. Right. So then to avoid that is usually rage. And you've seen a lot of people now, they're full of rage, they're full of it, because obviously when someone experiences shame, they feel deflated, emotion, emotionally collapse. Right. They're in a very bad way, no energy. But when rage kicks in, now they feel great, they can even feel self-righteous, they feel strong, there's no collapsing there. But again, it's just another defense. And then that shame ends up being projected onto it, into other people. And through splitting, other people are demonized, but they're great. So it's this black and white thinking again. And then just going up to the green, the, the fourth chakra there, right. there's uh, no heart, no empathy, no compassion with that either because that's probably closed. And then that shame probably goes back to what they experienced as a child as well. Exactly. So it's uh, indirect revenge, I call it, when other people or buildings get destroyed. They're really these people and buildings, in a way, like the, the representations or perhaps their parents or someone who bullied them. Right. But because they're not the original source and they're not dealing with the original wound, they will never have enough revenge because they're not dealing with who really harmed them. Well, wow. very, then, very well said. Right. So, I mean, the entire world right now, and I'm, you know, this is obviously there's outliers, but, you know, to summarize, it really is just a gigantic cesspool right now of unintegrated trauma. Mm. Right. That's where we're at right yeah. now. It's like the dark, it's like, the collective dark night of the soul is happening yeah. for many, many people on this planet. And, you know, you and I could probably make an argument that it's, this is beneficial in the long run because mm. people are going to have to choose. Yeah. You know, are you willing to integrate, to go within, to go beyond, to self-examine, yeah. to acknowledge the issue, or are you not? And I, you know, clearly yeah. I'm sure many people will choose not to and, and you know, and what yeah. that means or what that comes, whether, you know, they have to continue on the reincarnation recycling wheel. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I won't speculate. I'm sure there's a lot of different options, but it's fascinating to see how fast things are shifting, you know, as yeah. the energy of, the, you know, whatever, however you want to look at it, the energy of the universe, the spiritual central sun, as it hits and we change and we shift and people's vibration and consciousness does increase. Cause obviously mm -hmm. a lot of people are, a lot yeah. of people are waking up. They are asking questions. You know, they're not at the conversation you and I are having today, but they're, they're getting there. Yeah. I mean, I, you know this, right? And, and, you know, I want to get into the last couple of points here, but like, we're all on the same path, right? Like we're yeah. all walking back towards the perfection of being a soul, you know, unified in the, in the energy of source field, God, you know, whatever you want to refer yeah. to that, to that frequency. And it's like, you know, once you recognize that we're energy, you know, we're not these physical bodies, we're our yeah. spirit, our soul, our higher self. You know, I always tell people if they want to physically, you know, um, comprehend it, they think of like an energy orb, you know, like a ball right. of like whirring electrons. Yeah. That's really what we are. We're not these, you know, meat suits, these flesh puppet bodies. I yeah. mean, this is what we animate you know, through consciousness and will and intention, but we're not these bodies. And it's like when you learn that, you learn, you know, energy doesn't die. It just continually, infinitely expands. You drop the fear of death and finite, you know, limitation and lack and scarcity and all that stuff because yeah. it's all attached. And so I, I think that, you know, we're, we're, this is a great, you know, this whole thing, whatever this is, is a great opportunity for people to start going within, to start learning these concepts, you know, this frequency that we're talking about right now 
so that they truly can expand their soul and they can truly expand obviously their inner awareness. And they're really, you know, I like to call it knowing. Remember I said at the very beginning of this, you know, most people are body sensing, but when you do internal work and mindfulness, you become knowing. It's a knowing. It's not a belief. It's not anything but a knowing because you're doing that work to gather that information, which is again, being provided by that divine still light. Yeah. Um, so th- again, it's, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity for the people that are going to take advantage of it. Yeah. Well, as they say, an attack is a cry for help as they say. So, and, uh, through all this stuff coming up to the surface for people and even with people having to stay in because of this whole COVID business, it's then given people the chance. Some people will, of course, have of course carried on as normal there's plenty of escape still but there has been people of course have also started asking different questions deeper right. questions do i want to live in this way any longer perhaps my life has been put on standstill but if i carried on living in the same way would i have been happy so it's kind of allowed them to step back and to reflect and to see right. what is what do i need to do to and 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 i think this whole thing of although we we can never die but i think keeping in mind that sometimes this form will die right and that can allow us to think what matters here what truly matters what does truly matter and before you answer my wife taught me this you know i have a very i'm blessed i have an amazingly spiritually aware aware and advanced soul uh, being wife Mm -hmm who's been a great spiritual mentor of me, but she said, and I, I'm sure you agree, but she's like no. two purposes of, of, of man while yeah. here in physical incarnation to give and to receive yeah. love. You agree? Disagree. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. Yeah. Very much about service and to create as well, to create, to see that we are creators and to for it not to be just so one big work a thumb and to enjoy creating and giving and to have a bit of fun i think yeah 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 creation conscious co-creation and joy yeah if you if you if you can just stay in that field or that frequency every day and laugh and smile and obviously you know when you're with loved ones to enjoy the time with them. As you know, so many of us get caught up, especially when you're a really big creator, which I create a lot of content, you create a ton of content. Yeah. Yeah. We can kind of get caught up in the content creation sometimes mm. and not the vibration of physical affection yeah. or interaction with human beings. So you're, there is a balance and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, yeah. that's to- that's truly it, man. So the, the last couple of points I want to share with you, and then I want you just to kind of give me your summary of where we're going. Um, mm. What, in your opinion, is from a strategy standpoint or a best practices standpoint, what is the best ways for people to increase their self-knowledge and their focus? Well, I think one thing I recommend is to spend time in nature because through being in nature and to either leave their phone at home or to have it switched off because then there's no distractions. If we go into nature, there's nothing there trying to say, look at me, give me attention. (laughs) And so we can then go within and it's a gradual process. But of course, if someone is carrying trauma and they're then blocked off from the neck down, they may need to start to work through some of their trauma just to start opening themselves up and to remove the layers, to remove the armoring that they have developed over the years to avoid feeling. And so going in nature, working through their trauma as well to gradually and to, and to see, because to me, self-awareness is, again, it's a process just like anything else on this planet. We need to eat every day or consistently. We need to breathe all the time, of course. Right. And just that with self-awareness, I don't see it as something we are, get to a point where we have complete self-awareness. We're always going to have blind spots, but it's just like a daily practice just like cleaning and eating or going to sleep. It's got to be a daily practice. Yeah. I mean, very well said. Um, You know, I agree hundred percent nature. You know, I always tell people that, that that's that nature is God. That really is the energy of nature uninterrupted 
But as you know, again, it takes, like you said, practice. It's a process of learning to silence the mind, of learning, you know, whether you do meditation or contemplation or maybe a practice or a combination of both. Again, to attain that stillness where you can then connect with that frequency of divine, yeah. you know, energy, which again is nature. I mean, I always say to people like, you know, who are, you know, what I call just not walking the path, truly lost, and but wanting to improve and wanting, I say, look, just go into nature, turn off your damn phone, yeah. don't have your biarnal beats on, go wow. into nature and listen to the birds, listen yeah. to the wind blow, listen to the trees and the leaves rustle. Yeah. If you have animals, hopefully dogs, whatever, take them into nature with you and watch them interact with the grass, the ground. Obviously, you should be grounding while you're in nature. Yeah. Take off your shoes and your socks. You know, get in a stream, put your feet in the mud, put your feet in the grass. I mean, every single day of my life, I'm in my backyard for at least 45 minutes. Sometimes only 30, depending on the day. But you know, that's, yeah. that's a part of my life. My watching my animals, being connected to them, listening to the bees, listening to the birds. That's a part of my life every day. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine not doing that, mm. you know, and as you know, and, and, and as we're both aware, so many people have no connection to nature. They're so, you know, enslaved into this externalization of just going yeah. to the office and sitting at the cubicle and plugging into the internet and doing whatever you got to do. That is just, it's just, it, it, there's no understanding of how important connecting to all that is. Yeah, I think you made a good point with the grounding because so much of today's world's computers, phones, it's all very heady. It's all very much being in the head, stimulation, whether it's caffeine or another stimulant, it's all very up. It's not very much in the body. And right. as you're saying, with grounding and leaving all these stimulants at home. Right. And then we can start to get more into our body. But of course, this is a process. It's not something that's going to happen on a, a weekend course or even a few weeks, even though it can seem that way. And uh, it's a process, yeah. Yeah, man, totally. This has been a profound podcast. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, oh, if, people want, if people want to work with you, yeah. Uh, connect with you, you know, online or obviously buy your books or anything like where's the yeah. best place? Where's the best place for me to have them go? Uh, the best place is www.oliverjrcooper.co.uk and consultations and books and courses and then audio, but all different things are available on there. And there's another link there to my main site with all the articles on there as well. So it's all easy to find. So let me ask you, um, if you don't mind, um, did you do, how did you create your courses? Did you just do, what technology did you use? Or did you just com just record on a normal computer and then just upload them to your site? Because I haven't looked at your site. Yeah, well, what, what I did was I had a few ideas and I kept, basically had a few bullet points but when it came to designing the course. I just had a few bullet points and I just, spoke about each point and then I ended up having the videos made of that and then I put them on Udemy because uh, I thought that would be the, because I used Udemy before and it just seemed like a very easy to use platform. Awesome. So, so I you, thought, you, yeah. You use pretty much U Udemy for your courses. You just yeah. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Because I'm I, that's my biggest issue right now. See, I knew the universe always aligns people up. Is like yeah. I have like you all these amazing books, but I've never been able to build courses, and I've I've yeah. had this like disconnect in my head because I've seen courses that are just like to me Mickey Mouse amateur, yeah. and I just didn't want to do them. But I mean, I realize that everybody has the same courses, so it's a matter of just doing it. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, that's what I always think. I get an idea, and usually I just go for it. Right. And uh, I like to keep things simple and not too complex because then it just leads to mental paralysis and <laughs> overwhelming and nothing gets done, does it? And then I think, well, if I don't get this done, then I can't get another course done. And I've usually got more than one idea. So yeah, yeah. It's just but any help you need, just give me a shout and I can give you any pointers because it's simple enough. I would love that. So here's your site. I'm actually, so guys, man, make sure you guys go and check out his amazing website, 21 books. I mean, again, you know, if I can say anything, how important trauma is, I mean, you know, look at that right down there. He's got trauma is trauma sabotaging your life. I mean, this is so important. There's so many people out there, as you know, um, 
that are not integrating their trauma and there's nothing more important than integrating your trauma. I mean, it's literally mm -hmm. that, I mean, I cannot, especially right now with all these people running around, like I said, in the victimhood vibration, complaining, yeah. it's not their fault, you know, being told by the mainstream that it's okay to be a victim and that it's okay yeah. to genuflect and all this, it's insanity. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's it, I mean, again, it's just, people just don't know, but obviously, you know, with people like you and this type of podcast, you know, there is help out there, but again, you know, how much, pro how proactive are you going to be? You know, are you going to be reflective? Are you going to do the inner work to learn these things? But I mean, man, truly appreciate you coming on the podcast today. It's been really awesome. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on the podcast. I suppose what it, when, when you said with the last part, it's the case of when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And when the teacher is ready, the student will appear. So it's a trust, isn't it? It's trust, man. hundred percent. Well, listen, um, appreciate you again coming on for all of you guys yeah. watching this podcast today. Please support the amazing fine people who do come on. Oliver J.R. Cooper is one of those people, 21 books. You saw his website. He's got all sorts of courses too. go there. If you have a trauma issue and you need it to be integrated, there's nobody, nobody who can help you better than Oliver. So again, Oliver, I appreciate it. Oh, Remember guys, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.